we are live. The magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I'm trying to I'm trying to watch ourselves on here and also on the phone, like on YouTube. <laughs> I know it's crazy. It just went off on my on my computer too. Like Hi everybody, here. welcome to Ecom 101 because class is in session, but this is extra credit. Yes, extra credit. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I actually stole Joey's line. <laughs> ah, no, it's, it's, we flip things up when we go live, right? Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right. Mm. So let's give it a few minutes here. Not a few minutes, a few moments. See if anybody joins us, or are we just going to talk to ourselves? Yeah. Okay. So now can you see the chat on your side or yes, I, okay. I have a comment section that shows up over here that I can, cause I have a private chat. That's what it shows online. Okay. Yeah. I have private chat and then I have the comments on here. If anybody comments on anything. Nice. Okay. And I think I can comment too. Let's see. I think you can. I don't think I can. I think I have Welcome. to, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think I can. Or maybe I can't. I'll chat with the host and other guests. Oh yes. All right. So I wrote welcome and it now shows up on the live stream so you can see uh see econ 101 says welcome hello nice let me see let me see let's see if we're we're live on youtube too um let's see it shows that we are yes i think there's a little you bit have of to refresh jim refresh <laughs> It's a little bit of a delay from our talking right now to what is yeah. uh, streamed there. Hey, there's yeah, a I see, there. I see us on YouTube. Yep, I'm, we're live. Hey, hey, my brother joined us. Nice. Hi, brother. <laughs> hey, Jim. Hey, Rodman, we're live. <laughs> so it might just be us two, three. Yeah, well, hey, we have a view at least. Somebody's watching us. <laughs> And I'm watching us ourselves. And it was funny. I talked to Bettina earlier. I said, hey, do you, are you going to watch us uh, on our live stream? And she goes, oh, no. Oh, no? All. And I said, what do you mean, no? She goes, oh, no. I was like, not even – I mean on the on the, on the the phone. She goes, oh, I thought you meant in the room. Oh, I'd be too nervous <laughs> in the room. I'll watch you on the – I'll put it on, on the, the app. Oh, that's hilarious. Hi, Bettina. <laughs> said, no problem. Yeah. I don't know. So. Is anybody else coming in? I see. Uh, yeah, so far it's just us, I think. We have four people viewing. I see four on the upper right on my screen here. So nice. If anybody else is here, just say hello. Yeah, just let, let us know. <laughs> let us know. <laughs> the whole episode is just going to be us saying, hey, we're here. Let us know. That's uh, funny. So, so Jimmy Boy is saying he didn't get a notification. He's pr he probably didn't do the little bell thing. Subscribe, like and subscribe, mine. notify. Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, mine mine <laughs> came through. I'll have to help him on his on his app. <clears throat> yeah, I feel kind of weird because it's extra credit. I'm not drinking coffee. You're not? Or well, you're drinking no, water I'm instead? Drinking, I'm drinking bubble tea. Oh, nice. That's good too. Yeah, it's just like apple and Hawaii fruit tea with this jelly stuff in it. Nice, nice. Uh, it's hot nice. here, so we need to kind of cool down. Yeah, it was a little warm today, but we have a delta breeze happening. So, because we live right by the river, Sacramento nice. River. So, yeah. So, anyway, we don't, yeah, we don't have the fog coming in yet, so it's a nice hot day, hot night. Nice. Okay. All right. So, I don't know. I don't know who else is here, but I'm, I don't I, know. Right now, we have four. Uh, girl like, down there. No worries. So I guess we can just. Well, the cool thing about this is. Um, It'll archive on YouTube, so we can always tweet this out for people or yeah. just the link out, and people can just come back and watch it later. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's cool. So absolutely. what I wanted to do tonight is we wanted to talk about um, eBay Opens coming up, right? Yes. So on our first episode, we had Robin talking about eBay Open tips, tricks, uh, things to you know remember, and I want to go over some of those again. And now that we're getting closer, and there's, I believe, some of the breakout sessions are up and everything else. Is that, is that correct? Or are they still? Yeah. The, um, those? I, I think on the agenda, it has all the eBay and vendor speakers. And I think in the breakouts, I think they have, I think they just have the people who are running the breakouts. I don't think they have who's going to be actually speaking in the breakouts or the pop-ups is what they call them. Um, but I do know that Wade is in one of them. I know that, um, 
uh, I think, I, th I can't remember her name. I think it's Ashley from Hustle Hustle Home or Hustle Mom Home or something like that. I, I forget her IG mm -hmm. name. Uh, there's uh, Julie from Casa Chic. I mean, there, and then there's Katie from Katie and Vicky. Uh, so Katie's speaking on a women's panel. So, so I don't know if they have those up yet. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if they have um, all of those people up yet. I know that the only reason I know some of them because they're posting it on their IG, you know, like saying, Hey, you guys catch me at, you know, eBay open or whatever, but yeah. So yeah, agenda, actually it looks yeah. like right now on the agenda, I'm on their page. Let me oh, see good. If I can yeah. Call it up here and share it with everybody here. Nice. Okay. So yeah, it looks like on the agenda is just only the session times and work, workshop yeah. session when the breaks are. It doesn't actually give the um, who's doing what yet. But I got to tell you, do you see all those food breaks? There's breakfast, there's lunch, there's a breakfast oh food break, God, there's yeah. a lunch, there's a afternoon food break. I got to tell you, woo, their food breaks are awesome. I mean, they've got oh. chocolate covered Oreos oh. and oh, they've got some good stuff. So and each of these breaks, there's a 15 minute break here, 15 minute break there. There's there's time to get food during that time. No, those are actually probably breaks to either get to another session, you know, like get towards another work a uh, workshop session, mm -hmm. or hit hit the potty and then you know, or grab a water. They always have their, um, you know, they always have a lot of water and iced tea and coffee out um, because you're in Vegas and they want to keep you hydrated. So water right. is always super available. Um, but on the afternoon food breaks and the morning food breaks, and then of course breakfast and lunch, they have a massive amount of food out. No one's going to starve. Um, I would also on the afternoon breaks, you take the snacks to your workshop um, sessions or even the pop-ups that are going to be happening in between there. And then the general session is something that I suggest everybody go to. The general session is like, it's like going to um, like if you were in high school or college, you, you go and you hear, the big people, you know, the big dogs start talking and telling you what's new coming down the pipe and which is it, which is good because we'll hear like all the new stuff, you know, um, the intelligence, what, what is that called? The, um, the newest stuff that's happening on the app, the, uh, mm -hmm. whatever that's called the, uh, you got it, Rob. <laughs> yeah, like, you know the the cool spacey stuff that's happening. Yeah. Um, and then they have the shipping department, and then they sometimes have vendors come up, and then sometimes they surprise us too. They have special guests come mm. and like you know share their experience um, with you know eBay auctions and stuff. Oh, and we just I just posted something on Ecom's uh, IG not too long ago because they had eBay for charity just did a huge thing with the SBs. Yes. So they did, they did huge auctions and made lots of money for a lot of good charities for, um, you know, the para Olympians, the, mm -hmm. I mean, it was just, I mean, it was amazing. So, and a yeah. lot of women in sports. So, and then they had like uh, the uh, world cup winners, the women's soccer up there. It was pretty amazing to watch. So it was fun. So eBay is going to probably share all that. <clears throat> um, and we never know, you might have somebody from, eBay charity and maybe a few surprise guests. Don't, don't quote me on that. I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if that doesn't, if that's not part of some kind of conversation because eBay charity is really doing some big stuff. So yeah, I, I most of how many percentage of your listings do you put on eBay charity? I we're talking about that. Do you do that um, at all on I've, your stuff? I, I have, I have not recently last year. I did some for cancer research. Um, but not recently, but it's, it's always good to do something, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. if, for you, since you do a lot with animals, like you might want to do something for a charity locally, you know, and the good thing about eBay charity too, there's, I, I forget how many charities you can actually plug into your listing from eBay. They, they right. have a ton that you just have to like go in and click. And then it, that percentage, whatever you decide goes to eBay charity. Yeah, we tend to do a few. It depends on the shirt. So recently we had a couple of shirts that were maybe like more uh, patriotically themed or had uh, veteran themed type shirts. 
So we went ahead and put on, uh, you know, wounded warriors or something yeah, along those yeah. lines. Like a percentage yeah. going to those people. If I sell for a sports team, like the Golden State Warriors, popular around by us, the Warriors have a community fund that's actually on um, uh, eBay charity. So we'll mm. donate a, a portion of whatever we sell Golden State Warriors wise to the Warriors community Ooh, fund. That's yeah, cool. So that's a cool thing to do. And obviously, what's what's good about that is you're, you're donating a portion, but your whatever part you whatever part you donate. It's minus off of your eBay fees. Ooh, nice. See, that's so, that's good information. It's a win-win. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So if absolutely. it's a if it's a ten dollars shirt and you're doing a ten percent donation, you'll obviously be donating a dollar, which is tax a tax write off for you. But your right. final value fees are only on nine, not on ten. Oh, see. So you save a little bit. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. If you I happen to sell something a hundred percent, then you don't pay any fees at all. It's just all goes to charity, but. That's nice. the decision you make if you have a lot of stuff you want to do. That's awesome. I'm just typing yeah. in here that we're live on yeah. uh, on Instagram to let, let it go. Our... Show it out. <laughs> we yep. are live. Come <sighs> on. Look at all of <laughs> Check us all out. It was actually interesting. You mentioned Paralympians. Um, my uncle, actually, my, my dad and my uncle are both blind. I oh, you, yeah, I do remember that. that. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're both blind. And when I was growing up, my dad and my uncle both competed in track and field and weightlifting events. Oh, that's cool. And my dad was in the world championships a few times um, overseas, went to Canada, uh, United States, won a couple of world titles in his division. And my wow. uncle is probably was one of the most decorated Paralympians. Uh, he's in the, I think he's in the Paralympic Hall of Fame, actually, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Yeah, track and field. Joey. Javelin, everything else. He's a motivational speaker that and everything. But yeah. Is rad. So yeah, he's a, uh, his name is Rich, Rich Ruffalo. If you want to look him up, he was a teacher. Um, he's actually love it. Disney's teacher of the year back when I was a kid. Oh, and my. Competed in javelin, shot put, discus. Man was world champion. Went to Barcelona. Went to Korea. Yeah. Went to um, Greece. I think went to Atlanta. We saw him in Atlanta, Georgia, in '96. Because what the Paralympics do is they follow the regular Olympics a few yes. weeks later in the same city. Yes. Yes. So, which is pretty cool. That's so. it, that is rad. That is yeah. rad. Oh my yeah. gosh, I, I love that. Yeah. So <laughs> I remember going to Atlanta in '96. It was like two weeks after the regular Olympics. It was the Paralympics and seeing him throw and and stuff. And wow. Yeah, it was fun. That's intense. That is like uh, that whole time that they're actually competing, you know, the time where they actually mm -hmm. do the trials and then they get accepted into the team yeah. and then there's all that training and then the time when they actually do the game. I mean, that whole year for them is yes. just an intense. Mm -hmm. So good for him. Wow. What a great. Yeah, that was a really good shout out for, yeah, for your, your good. family. That was really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we should kind of maybe just give a little introduction of like who we are. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. since we are live. I mean, we kind of we had some videos. We have some videos up that kind of explain everything. But um, my name is Robin. And I have been a full time eBay seller for almost well, a little over two years. Um, I'm top rated. And uh, I have been kind of dabbling in a bunch of stuff in eBay. Um, I have a ton of diversity in my store. So, but I'm known for my vintage um, and my hard goods, um, also vintage, but hard goods in general. Um, I also have some side hustles around here. Um, I'm kind of known in my own Tiki community. Um, Sacramento Ohana is, is part of the group that I'm in um, that I help them sell their mugs or their tiki wares um, just because, you know, I'm kind of experienced and I get top dollar. I just sold a tiki mug not too long ago uh, for uh, $700. Um, wow. Yeah, it was really, it was cool. Um, so that, so that was, a, that was a great experience for me and also the tiki community in, in the sense that they realized that I'm a trusted seller for them. So um, yeah, and I have family. I'm um, the eldest sister, um, so my kid sister is probably going to be watching soon. Um, she has three amazing children. My mom and dad live here in Sacramento, about 
five minutes for me. Uh, I'm married to uh, Jimmy Boy, as some of you know him as. Um, I call him Jimmy Boy. A lot of people call him Jim. He'd probably prefer that, but I call him <laughs> Jimmy Boy. Um, we don't have children, but we do have a fur baby. Her name is Condi, and she's right down below me. Um, she's a rescue. She's an Australian Shepherd. She's probably about maybe seven. Um, she's a, she's real sweet. I mean, she's just a really sweet baby. Um, and we are continually doing inventory in our house. Like we're adding uh, downstairs in our garage. That's where our store is. More shelving. And then we're also in the middle of building a tiki bar outside and then doing a tiki lounge inside. So we're, it just looks like we just moved in. So, and I'm sure I, you all of you can relate who are resellers and probably even some of the tiki folks that are watching because uh, their houses are, we're right in the middle of a big thing because come October, we have a tiki bar crawl um, where we actually go to each other's homes to check out their bars and participate. It's really kind of cool. Nice. So yeah, and then just a quick shout out, Joey and I also are part of the team, the eBay meetup team. So we uh, get together once a month um, to help put everything together and we coordinate the speakers and we have a really cool perspective because we actually do the meetup on uh, eBay campus, which we call AKA the mothership. So we really get a lot of influence from uh, the employees because they stop in, they just want to check us out. Uh, we have a lot of managers stop in and want to, you know, like, hey, we'd like you guys to test this or what do you think of this? And so we have we have kind of a really good, per, you know, a different perspective on the meetup. So we're kind of lucky that way. Um, I drive all the way from Sacramento, which is on some days. Good God. Like, I know. <laughs> so, well, it's, hey, I love eBay. What can I say? I know. Um, it's sometimes like two, two and a half hours on a bad day, maybe three, three and a half. Wow. We try, yeah. We try to carpool because we, uh, the leaders of the meetup are Sherry and Alan. And so. Shout we, out Sherry and Alan. Yeah. So uh, we, we carpool with them. Um Nice. So it's really fun. So we have a really tight little family, uh, eBay meetup family. Um, and then we have a lot of members who come and it changes monthly because it kind of depends on their schedule. So if you yeah. guys are ever in San Jose, it's always the fourth Tuesday of the month. Sometimes it, it does fall differently. Um, but just check our page. We do have a eBay Bay Area meetup page. Um, you do have to sign up. Please answer all the questions because we don't allow anybody in who doesn't answer the questions because we really try to filter trying to stay with people who are within the area. Um, but if you're coming in as a guest, I would say yeah. reach out to Joey and I. Um, and then that way we can put you on an extra, you know, we, we do, we, people yeah. do come. I mean, it happens, right? I mean, we've had Teresa Cox there as a special People guest. Show up all the time. Yeah. yeah, we just need to Always let welcome. eBay know. Yeah, because eBay's got security issues that we have to, like, we have to sign in, we have to do our license, and we get a little armband, and yeah, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, so that's about, I mean, really it. And I've done a lot of eBay opens, and then the last thing that I do for eBay is that I have been honored uh to be invited to um um a few of the becoming ebay summits which is basically another cool perspective is where i come and speak um as a seller to the new employees of ebay so they get kind of a firsthand experience of sellers and they ask some really tough questions and we give them very transparent answers <laughs> So it's, it's kind of fun. Exactly. Yeah. So, nice. and it's a great team who puts that together too, you know, shout out to the uh, becoming eBay summit team. They rad. They're so cool that's, team. that's kind of my little story. Um, I mean, there's many facets to both Joey and I, but this is the beginning of, of my story. <laughs> so your turn, Joey. Yeah, my turn. Okay. So for those of you that don't know who I am, uh, my name is Joey Ruffalo. I'm an eBay seller, top rated seller. And as of, uh, yesterday, a posh ambassador. Ooh, yay! But congratulations. That's, that's mostly Bettina. She took over posh, so she's been doing that. So, congratulations that's to her. Really that's um, really been selling on eBay since 2000, back in the wild, wild west days where there's no photographs and no PayPal and checks in the money order in the mail. And fingers crossed, you got your item. <laughs> No kidding, man. That was uh, really I remember, rough. I remember that was when photos were <laughs> optional at one point. And you just had written descriptions of things. My God. Wow. It's come a long way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, because now, yeah. now we have 
Because now we have an app. Now we have an app. Yeah. <laughs> now we have smartphones. My gosh. <laughs> so a top rated seller. I am also an e-com. I don't want to call myself a consultant or an expert because I'm far from it. I'm always practicing and learning. Yeah. But I have an MBA in financial planning. I am a certified consumer debt specialist and a certified personal financial counselor. Mm-hmm. as well as a Dave Ramsey um, master financial coach and Ramsey preferred coach. So basically all that means is I, I could work with you on budgeting and getting out of debt and coming up with a plan on a personal side. But on a business side, I work with e-commerce sellers on developing marketing strategies and goals and, and everything they can to grow their business and pretty much try to work it on a debt-free level, which is what I'm all about. Um, right. But I'll work with you in any level, getting whatever you need to do. And, yeah, so basically this that's what the focus of the show is about, is to kind of bring in a little bit of the financial aspect to e-com. Because we're all sellers. We all, right. once we sold something, we became a business. But we just, a lot of us don't know what to do next, right? right. Um, you may have heard also that I've been on uh, the eBay for Business podcast a few times, uh, episode 24 and 26. And yeah. soon will be episode 49 next week. So stay tuned for that one. I'm nice. uh, just talking about various topics of e-commerce. Um, one was on just the various parts of financial planning. That's not really discussed. Like what do you do for retirement as a sole independent seller? Uh, what kind of insurance do you guys need? Um, what What are some cash flow issues that you might have coming up? That These are all things that I we, will discuss a little bit on the show, but also that if you need uh, one-on-one guidance, you know, hit me up and we'll talk and, I'm all about seller growth. I'm all about you know helping hands and getting people going, and which is why getting it back to the meetup thing, meetup is such a great place because we are all sort of behind the keyboard all day, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I see you on the computer once in a while, once a week when we do our show now, but yeah, before that it was text messages or you just kind of like <laughs> oh I, I watch the Instagram channel or whatever. But right. meetup's a great place. Um, Meetup.com, check it out on there for eBay stuff. I think eBay.com slash meetup, if I'm not mistaken. Find one in your area. Gravitate towards it. It's always a welcome. At least ours is. I'm assuming yeah. we all are too, but we're always oh, yeah. welcome welcome arms, uh, open arms and you know, welcoming too. I must say ours though, because not the fact that it's at campus and we get special celebrities like Griff sometimes showing up. Yeah. Which is yes. amazing. It is amazing. Um, and just a local like you said, the employees and stuff like that, we could take issues right to them and get their information and contact yeah. them on your behalf. Um, right. but the other thing that's great about it is we have some awesome food yes. <laughs> and we have some outstanding giveaways. Like Ooh. Every- Ooh, and yes. yes. And, so I'm just, and on this live, we got to make sure. Okay, so you guys try to get us to a thousand subs because Joey and I have amazing swag to give away once we get to a thousand sub subscription i mean i've gotten stuff there like let's see here like ebay bags you know oh yeah oh yeah and then these like ebay journals and stuff yeah oh no wait i joey wait till i show you what i got because this shirts is like and truly... sweatshirts and t-shirts and, yep. mugs and cups and whatever's in griff's garage at the time <laughs> i yeah. feel like thermoses and stuff so, so these come are to like our meetup. Coveted. I mean, these are like super coveted. Come to our meetup. It's a dollar to get in, and you get a chance yeah. to win all these awesome prizes. Hang out with Robin. <laughs> so. Yeah, hang out with us. Yeah, it's sure. yeah, truly. Yeah. And I, the only difference with our meetups, Joey, I think, and other meetups because we really do meet on the campus, mm-hmm. is that other meetups actually talk about other platforms. Right, like Amazon, Bosch, right. Mercari. Yeah. We do not. Um, we talk about it afterwards at our, at our yeah. like, hangout, but yeah, I mean, like, well, you know, as the meetup team, we get together because then we discuss like um, yeah. the next meetup, you know, or the next speaker or the next subject or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, we do kind of miss some of that because uh, Joey and I do sell on other platforms, but. That's why we've joined other groups, you yeah. know, like on Facebook and Instagram. And so we're learning that way too. Um, I think the trade off, Robin, on that. And I, oh, hate to, I, throw I know exactly the what you're going to say. The, I know we get gonna... is we get yeah. firsthand access to new the new technology, oh, the new um, absolutely, and we get new perks. We hear about all this stuff way ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Like we knew about managed payments before anybody else. We were like, right. oh, we're going to show you something, but you can't say anything for six months. Okay, right, 
right well, and this, then- you know and it's just that's what we get access to in exchange for like we specifically talk about ebay but the great thing is we go out we try these things in beta and we go back and we talk to you know the head of community development and the head yes. of the people that are run the ebay for podcast the ebay po- podcast show and yes uh, other, other areas we had the guy in there who did um who's in charge of like shipping and GSP. We talked to them about all their pain points and yeah, issues and yeah. they take it right back to their team and they start working on it. So yeah. we have that trade off and I'd rather have that a little bit away and let's, let's get one platform sort of dialed in because yes. there's a lot of things going on today. I was reading on one of the boards where people were upset about managed payments because there's like rolled out in three different phases, I guess. Now there's, if you enrolled before a certain date, then you didn't get any fees on certain things. Yeah. If you're enrolled after a certain date, you're going to get no fees until October 1st. And then after the October 1st, if you enroll like now, then you're going to get fees on things and the fees changed. And uh, what they said they were going to do is different than what they are. So there's like this constant sort of change in the rollout, but we kind of can go back to them and just be like, Hey, what's going on? You know, we talked at length right when seller, the last seller update hit. Oh, yeah. Where they yeah. took away the good to cancel. They made everything good to cancel. <laughs> right? Right. It was literally like on Monday and our meetup was the next day. Mm-hmm. And the whole hour and a half, two hour meetup was on that topic. <laughs> it was yeah. kind of crazy, wasn't it? Like, it was. I, I don't know. I mean, crazy, like it's been crazy good. Like it was good for them to get some of the feedback pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, right. You know, sometimes we have to reel some of those people in. They do get a yeah. little like, you know, one way. But uh, yeah, I agree with Joey. I think that the good, it's a good payoff that we actually get yeah. employees sitting right next to us and we get access to uh, sometimes, you know, well, Joey got invited to do the podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure I've been invited to do some beta testing for different places. Like I do love the seller hub. So I'm part of that team where I call in and I give them my updates and stuff like that. Yeah. We, we kind of have first access to things like Joey said. So it's, it's, it is kind of cool, but we do yeah. miss out on like Amazon and Mercari and Posh and all that. But again, that's why we join basically group you know facebook yeah. groups and ig and he and i exchange like what are you doing on posh and what are you doing on posh? what, what exactly. are you doing exactly. what are you doing, what are you doing? Joey? <laughs> yeah but that's what that's the important thing about meetup though is if even yeah. in other areas it's you realize you're 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 not alone in the sub yeah. world i mean you're you could be behind a keyboard all day like again like i said listening and also in the groups typing but to see some people in person actually interact that's something Absolutely. you usually would have. Yeah, you have that yeah. a nine to five job, right? You're sitting right. behind a desk, you got your employee or, or your fellow employee right next to you. You can just go to lunch together and talk. But right. that's what kind of meetup is. Meetup's kind of like the, the high school reunion every month. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now I will tell you this. There are some people that do meetups and there are some people who do meetups. Yes. The ones that are really good are the ones that get a lot of feedback from their members, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, I know it's a little harder in the eBay meetup where we meet on the campus because we have a very structured eBay has first platform. I mean, they, they get the, the run yeah. of the floor. So we, it's very different. It's very, very different than the meetups that you do in restaurants and houses. But I am going to tell you, I've been to some meetups where the person who is running the meetup, it's all about their show. And meaning that they just run it the way they want to run it. And that's really not how a meetup should be. A meetup should really encompass everybody, get the mm-hmm. ideas of the, you know, the populace and figure out like what you want to discuss the next meeting. Because that's how every meetup should start. Like it should be like making sure their members feel like they're part of a group. You know what right. I mean? Right. And we said this in, in one of the previous episodes where we talked about how we all sell on the platform. So technically we're all competitors, Yeah. but we're not necessarily competitors because there's no. so many of us and we all sell right. so many different things and one-offs and stuff. You sell right. t-shirts, I sell t-shirts, but we sell so much different stuff and so many different t-shirts that we're not necessarily competitors, but mm-hmm. we're colleagues. And that's right. kind of a way to look at it. That's what eBay, it's just the meetup does. It's, I, I even talked about it again. And uh, I think it was lesson two is like surrounding yourself with people that do things better than you. Mm -hmm. So you could fill in your gaps, right? Right. I don't know anything about, you know, vintage wear or tiki stuff. So when Trader Don shows up and you show up to stuff and I have questions about a tiki bug I found, I can show that off and say, hey, is this worth it? Is this worth it to me or not? Or or a Hawaiian shirt or something. That's not my wheelhouse, but I I can go to the, I can go to you guys and say, hey, what do you think? 
I mean, right. I did that. With, I did that a couple of meetups ago. We bought a board game, and I was like, I had a list for an extra certain price. I was like, what do you guys think? And you guys, man, it's too low. You got to up that up. It's it's one of a kind. Mm-hmm. Upped it up and sold it. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and be like, keep everything quiet. That's that's what the meetups are about. And that's why they're so awesome. Is you shouldn't feel intimidated, and people shouldn't feel intimidated about giving information out. I mean, it should be a share fest. Basically. Oh my gosh! Didn't we just have a really rad meetup? Let's do like, uh, hello, yeah. Maria. We're shouting yeah. you out, dude. That was that rocked. I and mean, then we did, the, and I, we did the shipping yeah, thing and everything. Yeah. Was awesome. Oh well, you and I did the shipping thing, and we love shipping. So I mean, yeah. it's just showing people how to do things correctly mm-hmm. and do it the right way, Whoa, as opposed with, to not. You know, and it's that's what's important. Right, with the talent within the meetup. I mean, that's what's right. so great. So is you got to utilize that. You got to tap into that talent. You find somebody that is selling a hundred thousand dollars a year with their stuff, and you're selling five thousand. You got to cozy up next to that person and ask some right. questions. Right. And then, and like, no- next to the other people and everybody else, how right. do you take your picture so good? How do you do this so well? And that's what you'll yeah. learn. You'll 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 be able to yeah. fill in the gaps of those pain points, right? Through right. meetup. If you're going to meetup and you don't and you walk away without learning anything, you're not at the right meetup. Exactly. And that, and that goes for any meetup, not just exactly. e-com or eBay. If you oh, if, if you're going to a meetup for if you're going to a meetup for tiki people, let's say, right? And yeah. you walk out of that meetup and you're like. Man, I didn't learn anything. Like, right. I, you know, it was supposed to be about these, like this vintage mug from the '60s or something, and they just talked and talked and talked and talked. I didn't learn nothing. Everybody there was sort of closed off. Nobody wanted to ask me anything. You're not showing back up to that, right? Exactly. Right? No, absolutely. I yeah. totally agree. And I just want to give a, a tip for all of those who are new that are going to eBay me or I mean uh, eBay Open. There will be a booth, most likely for eBay meetups. Um, they do it every year. And, um, I would say go there and sign up and they'll try to find you a meetup or they might even encourage you to actually be a leader to do an eBay meetup. Um, because you know, even if it was like four people and you guys met at a coffee shop, you guys probably get a lot of information between each other. And then eventually that gets spread out. And then next thing you have eight people. And I would definitely say just advertise, advertise, advertise. Market your eBay meetup within your little city or town. Um, but I would start there. If, you, if you're if you coming to open, go find the eBay meetup booth and get yourself situated with who's running that. It's usually uh, Brian Burke and his whole team. Um, and, you know, next thing you know, you, you got to have like, I think it's uh, Brian said you got to have like 30, emplo- or 30 em- employees, 30 members for him and his team to show up. Okay. I mean, that, that might be really not too goal. hard. And yeah, that's a really good goal. So that's what I would yeah. do because, and then again, just tap into the talents of each member because even the shy ones have something to offer. Just make it a comfortable yeah. situation and not something where it's aggressive and you'll be surprised because I'm telling you, Joey and I learned a lot the day that Maria stood up there and talked about Pinterest. I'm just saying. And then we had a lot of questions, Joey, about the shipping that we did. That was balls. So Anyway, all right. There so, what do you want to talk about now? Do you want to talk about eBay Open, or do you want to? Well, we have five viewers right now. Do we really? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Who do we have? Picker just showed up. Picker. Nice. Welcome, my friend. Yes. Hey. We're legit now, Joey. I know we did a live show and people showed up to watch. <laughs> oh, only thirty-three minutes in. What is it? The longest journey begins with a single step. I would say the. The longest YouTube video begins with one viewer. Yeah, oh, that's so corny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hashtag anyway. corny. Hashtag. All right. Well, welcome. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Just a recap. We talked a little bit about, about eBay Open. We talked about who we are, what we do. We talked a little bit about meetups mm-hmm. and eBay for charity. Yeah, I think now we're just gonna. Yeah, probably now we're just like- kind of just. Hang out a well, few minutes. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, like, uh, at eBay Open, um, they sometimes, like, uh, it used to be eBay Radio, and now it's eBay Podcast. And so they do this little contest, just kind of get everybody, uh, you know, just kind of get the room worked up. Um, so they ask you to wear, like, the craziest hat. Um, and so all of us people who are eBayers were kind of crafty. And so I think it wasn't last year, it was the year before. Mm-hmm. So I made this hat, like, like it's this big old baseball hat with like, whoops, wait, I got to find the camera. eBay. Nice. Yeah. Oops. I keep doing it. eBay. It's got the little, it's all the eBay colors. So yeah. So I, I didn't win. 
because there was Stephanie um, who made this huge like sombrero out of eBay tape. It was massive. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and she's this itty bitty little tiny fun size woman and it was just hysterical so she won i don't know what they win i mean i it's a lot of swag it's like mm -hmm. you know it's kind of this kind of stuff you know like you know the ebay this kind of stuff and sweatshirts and limited edition stuff so so that's kind of fun so i would um i don't know if they're going to do it this year because you know every year it seems to change a little bit um this time it's at mandalay bay um and the even the venue the the party is uh, at uh, House of Blues, so that's different. That's going to be wow. a different thing for yeah, us. I saw that on the agenda. Yeah, it's, it's cool. So, uh, but there's <laughs> lots of swag, and I mean, yeah. lots of food, and there's just a really great uh, atmosphere of networking. And then you get to meet people like me that you meet on IG, and you think like you're never going to meet face to face, and so it's kind of fun. Like I get to, act, I'm hoping you know, the people that are in here, I get to meet, like, you know, you guys see me, I'm always wearing flowers. Just find me, get in my face, I say know. hi. You like, get to you meet know. your heroes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. I have a lot. <laughs> There's like, I'm pretty impressed with most people that, that yeah. I follow and, and they follow me on IG because, you know, the, each, like you said, they're just my coworkers because yeah. I don't really find them competition. I find it more motivating for me. Like if someone sold something that I hadn't sold, I kind of like want to reach out to them and say like, well, wait a minute, let me see your listing. Cause maybe I'm doing something wrong and right. I need to like try to sell it. So yeah, I love and, it. And yeah. for those of you going to open this year, come yeah. see, Rob come see Robin. Oh yes. Limited edition. Yeah. Wink, oh, wink. limited edition. Oh yeah. Limited edition. Uh, well it, I can't, I don't have it, but it's no, going to be, but it's going to be a limited be edition pin. pin. He yes. one on one pin. Mm. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> because if you've never been to eBay Open, it's kind of like, uh, well, I'm sure most people know Disney, Disney freaks, you know, like they wear the lanyards and they have all the pins on. eBay Open started doing that and now it's this huge thing. And so uh, find me. I've got two pins. I've got limited edition for my brand and I've got limited edition for our YouTube channel for Joey mm -hmm. and I. And uh, so, yeah, there's you might be the only one that has it on your lanyard and then never know. We might have some kind of contest. I'm just saying, I mean, you never know. You never know. <laughs> I want you to Instagram it out with the hashtag and show us your favorite Woo! place. To put your pen. I don't yeah. know. I'm all about Let's it. That's like a, out. Yeah. It's marketing 101, right? I mean, like I'm all about it. So yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah. So that's what, what's going to happen. So if you're at eBay open, find me and, um, just the little tips I would tell you if you've never been, wear comfortable shoes, wear casual, well, nice casual clothes, but something that you can yep. walk in. Um, I, I would bring a backpack. Don't wear high heels. Um, bring some snacks. Um, actually, maybe not bring snacks because it seems like eBay's got you covered in food this year. Last year was a little, like. was a little chintzy, but this year it seems like they've got it kind of handled. Um, I would definitely bring, like we talked about, bring something to write notes on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, writing utensils. I would definitely bring a tumbler for water because you, oops, let me get the camera because you are in Vegas. You've got to stay hydrated. It's going to be a hundred and it's going to be like the devil's armpit. It's going to be hotter than hell literally. And you just need to like, make sure you keep hydrated. Um, yep. And then, yeah, just be open to new experiences, meeting a lot of new people. And if you're slightly introverted, I, this is going to push you. Uh, it's yeah. going to push your limits for sure. But just know that, you know, the intentions are always good there. And people are probably just excited to see you because if they follow you on IG, I don't care how many followers you have on IG or Facebook. Most people are really generally just very excited to meet you face to face because, you know, they're, if they're like me, I'm, I'm going to be all up in your grill <laughs> just to say hi. I don't know. I love people. So it's me. So. There you go. Anyway. Yeah. So the, the recap from our last, I think it was our first episode. We talked about eBay open. It was yeah. go early to register. Yes, absolutely. Cause registration the, yeah. I think is happening all Tuesday. So check the schedule, mm -hmm. hook up with, uh, well not hook up with, but hook, hang around with <laughs> eBay employees, mm -hmm. uh, and, um, go to the classes, the eBay employee classes. Yes. If you're brand new, I would certainly, I would certainly go to the classes. If you are a seasoned seller, be picky and choosy on the classes because you might find some of them a little humdum, you know, like they're not 
because you're beyond that. Mm -hmm. But the exciting thing that they started last year were the the seller panel pop ups. Pop ups next year. Yeah, those are amazing, and I love going to all of them. And sometimes they even have vendor pop ups. So, like for example, our shipping has changed now. So, the you know USPS has changed their shipping. So FedEx is starting to come around, and I think they'll probably have a vendor there to talk about their shipping and Mm -hmm. how to get some discounts that way. And, okay. you know, it's just going to be fun. But and then don't don't miss the general se- sessions. Yeah, the general, general session. Yep. Yeah. The general sessions are really important daily because it kind of gives you the rundown of what to expect that day. And then all the surprises and the surprise guests. And sometimes, uh, you know, they have some fun things. And then, of course, the shine awards, the shine awards happen at the general sessions too and that'll probably happen on thursday and then um it's just it's a good way of getting really good information and a good way to just kind of end the day a little bit and then of course just come hungry because ebay is going to feed you this year they've got breakfast breakfast break food they've got lunch they've got lunch break food i mean they it's pretty amazing so and i think the other things you mentioned last time was network 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 yes and realize that you can't do it all no, you can't. So you can't take it as it is. Mm-hmm. Just try to take it as much as you can. If you're a first time person, go and try to hit up those right. pop ups, those eBay employee classes and sessions. Those are probably the most important. Um, Absolutely. Any of those sort of so the pop ups you're talking about are those those things that they'll just be like, hey, check my listings out or check my store out kind of things or no? Are well, they separate? do it. Okay, so those are probably more vendor help. So for example, Mm. if you have a problem within your store, I think most of you have probably received an email. If you signed up and registered for eBay open, you should have already gotten an email to sign up to have your store actually checked by eBay employees. I would highly suggest that you make that appointment because they'll get crowded pretty quickly. And then you you might miss getting um, an eval done on your store. And those are really, really beneficial. Even for season sellers like Joey and I, mm-hmm. they're, they just really kind of tweak things just enough. Like they just get in there and they say, hey, have you tried this? Or have you tried this? Um, so do that, follow the link and register for that class. Try to fix the, you know, look on the schedule and try to figure out where you, you want to have it. Um, and then the room that Joey, I think was talking about too, is the vendor room. So they have a lot of different vendors coming in, third-party vendors. I would go get all the swag. You have eBay employees in there. You've got um, different departments in there. You've got the shipping department. You've got global shipping department. You've got the marketing department. You've got the promotions. You've got the seller hub. I mean, you you name it. It's like you walk in at a grocery store and you get a plethora of like, ooh, I'm going to try this and I'm going to try that. And it's a great way of meeting them, giving them a business card because you might be surprised. They might actually email you and ask mm-hmm. you to be on a show like eBay podcast or be on a seller panel or be in a beta testing panel, which is also just as fun. Yeah. Um, and hit, I don't Robin know. Up, hit Robin up at your business cards too. You may have yeah. an oh. episode of Ecom oh. 101. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you, just find me because I got lots of stuff going on and we got lots of contests and fun yes. things coming up. Um, and please, please get the word out. We're trying to get to a thousand subscriptions on the YouTube. We also have a podcast. So if you guys can't actually physically see us and you just want to listen yep. to us, we're on Spotify, iTunes, Google Joey's, Play. Yeah, Google. I mean, Joey, Joey's got us like everywhere. So yeah. Yeah, just, so basically, you know, yeah. So basically, all that stuff is if you if you come onto our YouTube channel and you see a title of an episode called Lesson, Lesson yeah. One, Lesson Two, Lesson Three, those are our pre-recorded shows. Those yeah. are also the shows that you'd see in here on Spotify and iTunes and everything else. Yeah. Subscribe mm-hmm. in multiple places just so we get our numbers up. That'd be awesome. Things right. like this where we pop on, we call it extra credit. And those are just our live episodes. They're just going to be one-off ep- episode extra credits. Uh, we do have a question actually from chat here. Oh, yay. From okay. Two page picker asking, uh, which do you recommend regarding your store for open vacation mode or more handling days? Ooh, okay, perfect. Hey, can I, you want me to go first? Oh, you can go first because I, I know go what first. I'm going to say. Okay, I'll tell you what I do. <laughs> so, what I do is what we do when we go on vacation is we do, um, we, it's kind of weird. So, what we'll do is the <laughs> items, the items that can go to auction. We put on auction for the oh. long, for because we never were gone for more than like six or seven days, right? Interesting. So last, time, okay. last time we went away, we went away for about a week. 
Okay. So we put our listing on auction as many as we could, and then the other items we just ended. Okay. Oh. Right, because we needed a store for refresh anyway. Okay. Okay. That's what. Uh, that's not an option I would recommend all the time. But the time before that, what we did was we just extended our handling time. Yeah. Up to the amount of time we were gone, and we put our store on vacation mode because sometimes things slip through the cracks. Okay. And we had both just in case things showed up because people on watch lists can still see it and some things. And I just didn't want to be whatever. Right. And then what some people will do is as they get closer to the end of their vacation, they lower their handling time. So if right. you're away for seven days, put it on seven days. Then the next day, change it to six, change it to five, change it to four, change it to three, right. whatever. Right. And then when you get back, boom, you're right on schedule with your one day handling time or whatever. Okay. Just options. Well, There's I mean, just that, so many different choices. You can yeah, hide your things. You know, I'm. You can set I'm, your things to zero now too, right? Is yeah. that another option, which is kind of like <laughs> annoying, but you can set all your inventory to zero, which still keeps your listing live, but yeah. there's nothing there. Then you have to go back yeah. and put all your quantities back in. I would in. be careful of that one though, because that's that gets a little. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't do what Joey does, um, I, and that's See, okay. That's what you learn. <laughs> that's okay. Um, but I, what Jimmy and I do, we actually put our store with bigger handling time. So I'm going to be leaving on a Thursday. Um, I'm going to probably put my handling time, uh, at five or six days. Cause Jimmy actually flies in on the next Tuesday. So I will change the handling time again, cause he can still do my shipping up to a certain point. Right. Um, so I would suggest mm -hmm. if you're going to eBay open, do not put it on vacation, put it with more handling time. If you have somebody actually who can still ship, I would just leave it at a one to two day shipping time to give you, you give the person a little more time because they don't know your inventory or it takes them a little longer to get the tags done. Um, if you are everything, you are the owner, the shopper, the shipper, the everything, I would certainly, it's the day before you leave. I would change it to the longest time you can do, which I think is like 10 days. Um, I don't think you, it depends on how many you're going to be. If you're going to be gone eight days, I would do eight days. And then every day at open. So every time there's a 24 hour clock, I would change your handling time by one day less. So if right. you start with eight, then go to seven. And that way, the closer you get to coming home, your days, it, it just, and, and I'm telling you, it's something really strange. When you do longer handling times, Jimmy and I have actually sold more stuff. Wow. When we came home, it was ridiculous. We had like 15 things to send, it was, which was awesome, but also very surprising. But I think it's because the store is constantly being worked on. Mm -hmm. And I think you know that for both of us, consistency is what's key in eBay stores. Right. So if you keep your store on, a longer handling time. And I think you'll find that most people who have, who are seasoned sellers will probably do the same thing. We just extend the handling time and then change it daily. And then, um, I was going to say something else and I just lost my train of thought. Uh, it happens all the time. It's called Robinism. <laughs> Hashtag Robinism. Um, Get that trending, yeah, guys. Right. And then <laughs> just make sure that when you you give yourself enough time on the coming on the back end that you, you know, don't cut yourself short on the shipping. Because if you mm -hmm. are a big time seller and you have 35 things to ship out, 35 takes a long time to ship. Yeah. So, you know. I the easiest, the easiest way to do it is what we do when we're planning a trip is we go into our business policies and set up a shipping policy that's sure. similar to what we have. It's just a random shipping policy. A lot of our stuff goes first class anyway, so we'll, it's easier to do. If you have several different shipping methods or policies, it's a little bit harder. But right. set up a shipping policy that you title vacation and have it as a seven-day hold or a 14-day hold. This way you can go into edit your listings and just apply that policy across the board without having to go into each listing and change it. Right. So if right. you can mass so, if you can mass change your listings at one time for the handling time, then you get back, change it back yeah, to your original it listings. Little, it's easier. It gets a little sticky because Teresa Cox has talked about this. So you know she has over five thousand items, and that is a lot. It takes a while because you go do like yeah. five hundred at a time, and it's just right. And so she always suggests like just extending your handling time and just you know do the bulk editing as much as you can. I mean, it just mm -hmm. takes a minute. I mean, it just it really does. And if you really, really, really don't want to be disturbed and you really just want to focus on the open, then by all means, extend the handling time and put it on yeah. vacation mode. And I mean, that's a great, that's a great that. thing about the show we do too. It's it's seller, it's personal preference. 
Oh, right? absolutely. So you, absolutely. You do it works for your business. I do it works for mine. And it just happens we do two different things, but they yeah. both get the oh, same yeah. results, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I mean, if we're selling stuff cool. and we're consistent, then that's mm -hmm. the best way. Um, that was the other thing I was going to say. If you're going to eBay Open, I would certainly this week, uh, and maybe the beginning of next week, I would certainly work on doing some drafts, making mm -hmm. sure that you have drafts that are going to drop live while you're at open. Mm. Even if it's like two or three, just have them drop daily because I'm telling you, it, you got to tickle your store every single day. You got to get in there and mix it up with your store just to keep consistent mm -hmm. so that that store um, algorithm is constantly, you know, just being played with so that the store stays rele relevant. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that awesome. was a great question. Great question. Yes, for sure. Yeah, we can help you out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. And I, I want to know where, where are you at? Where do you live? Like, are you? I mean, uh, uh, what what is what's his name? Uh, DuPage Picker. DuPage Picker. Where where are you from? Like, I, that's the one thing I never asked you last time we connected on IG. Like, where are you mid in the country? Are you on my side on the right side of the coast, or are you on the east coast where Joey's from? <laughs> yeah, I'm coast to coast, baby. I know you are now, <laughs> but you can tell there's a little bit of accident right there. A accident, accident. Accident. Yeah, my, my accent sometimes is accident. I got to turn that off. Whenever I'm home, whenever I go back home to visit my family, it's 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 a it's a New York fest, man. My voice, man. I changes. It takes a while to get back to it when I get back it's here. It's different but... than Boston, right? Like New York yeah, is. Yeah, Boston, like... you got. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna park a car. Yeah, right. New it's York, like it's like, hey, like you can get some coffee and some pizza. Hey, what's going on over there? Yeah. <laughs> It's a little bit. Hey, so we always, but the thing is too, we always talk a little bit with that little like uh, in the voice, you know. It's like, yeah. hey, how's it going? Hey, what's going yeah. on? Hey, everything's going fine. Oh my god! Yeah, I think like, a hey, <laughs> croissant. Hey, give me a pizza, a piece of pie. Hey. That's, a, that's yeah. so awesome. That's so Gosh. awesome. <laughs> ah, so DuPage Pickers in Aurora, Illinois. DuPage, nice. DuPage County. Wow, there you go. That's where you got your name. Home nice of Wayne's like World. Night. Oh, is it really? On. Look at you with the trivia. Well, it says, it says in the chat, Wayne's Oh, <laughs> he, does it? You wrote, oh. wrote Wayne's World. Yeah, party on, Wayne. That's hysterical. Yeah, so what's your real name? That's what I'd like to know because you know that's the next thing that's going to happen at eBay Open. I'll know everybody's IG name. Yeah. And then they're going to come up to me and I'm going to, I'm literally going to have a piece of paper and I'm going to write it like, Oh wait, let me write that down. Let me, let me get your real name so that I can call you out on YouTube and podcasts. <laughs> so yeah, like I also want to give a quick shout out to uh, HTK family flippers. Oh, joining us. They turn nice. on, they just turn on notifications so they won't miss a live show in the future, which means oh. we have to do another live show. Yeah. Oh, thrift love cell just joined us. Hey. Oh my God. Loretta. Yay. Yay! Oh yeah, she's amazing. She's in Canada and she's coming to open. Oh, Greg. Greg. Yeah. Is, Greg is do do page pickers. Greg. Oh, hey, Greg. Nice, nice, nice to meet you, you Greg. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm so, like we're seven at people. Minutes. I know. I think, and we're gonna have to stay a little longer now. Oh, people just got done people. with dinner. I think. That's yeah. Some happened. people just saw the Insta stories. Next time we'll try to do it a little bit ahead of time. I yeah. Think we're just learning this new. Um, live oh, yeah. stream thing that we're working on here. So I'll be able to get a, like a placeholder up at some point, like coming right. soon, like a live premiere thing that we'll be able to kind of say, Hey, we're going to go live in two days at this time. And you get a notification right. ahead of time. So right. we just decided last minute, I was running some errands like, Hey, let's get online and talk. Cause yeah. we feel like we have to do a live show. Yeah. We're kind of like, yeah, we're just, we're kind of, I don't want to say winging it. We're just, we are winging it. Um, well, I'm, we're a little more professional than that, Joey. But well, yeah. it comes off. At least it comes off that way, so that's good. <laughs> but we're we're just kind of, we we got a new system that we're working on Streamyard. So we thought, like, oh, we'll play around and like see how this works, which we love, by the way, because I mean now because now we have better like we can have like up to what ten people. I mean, I don't even know. We could do like the Brady Bunch yeah, up in yeah, here. Yeah, six people online. Yeah. So okay, so like Joey was saying before. The lives are going to be one-offs, meaning that we will only probably do them on YouTube and, um, uh, you know, we'll have certain contests in here and certain swag um, from eBay and stuff since both Joey and I are part of the eBay meetup crew and we, we have access to stuff. And I really, we just want to bring that to you guys. So anyway, all of our followers, please give us suggestions on like what you'd like to hear and see. And um, I know that the big popular one is coffee talk. 
Everybody yes. loves our coffee talk. So we're working on some sponsors there too. So like, hopefully we'll, we'll try to bring, like, I'm going to be going to Vegas. So there's some uh, pretty amazing mom and pop coffee shops there. They're not on the strip, of course, because it's all like, you know, McDonald's and Starbucks and Pete's, like the normal stuff. But uh, uh, there is one in Vegas that Joey really likes. That's a <laughs> black rifle. <laughs> I'm so jelly. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring you something. Don't worry. Oh, I'll good. Yeah, meetup's coming up soon. I'll see you there. Mm -hmm. I'll bring you some. And actually, I'll bring some for um, for our our followers, too. We'll have to do something. because Yeah, the I just got my uh, subscription, my monthly subscription renewed. So it's coming in the mail. That's how much Joey's an addict, that he actually has a <laughs> prescription. I, mean, prescri I said prescription. I meant subscription. It's same thing, right? <laughs> it is, right? It is. I mean, I'm telling you, Loretta, Loretta and I have this thing going back and forth we are coffee hounds like we we yeah. just need to run ivs like in the morning and just yeah. be you know good to go because coffee coffee iced coffee joey and i are total iced coffee people yeah. mm. so exactly. anyway well you know i will wrap it up here soon we were just talking about ebay open i'm just gonna leave you with this when you go just be open to meeting a bunch of new people and be um just networking because it's the best kind of thing to do. Uh, Loretta has been there a couple years. And the thing is, it's so big that I didn't even know she had come. <laughs> right. I was following her, but I didn't know she was there. And, you know, I mean, so just find us. If you have people that you follow on IG that you really want, or even Facebook or even on Twitter, I'm sure they're going to be there. Go find them. Go put yourself in front of them and say, hi, my name is because I'm going to do that. I haven't physically met Loretta, but Loretta and I, I'm going to give her the biggest California hug. I, as I see, I mean, I feel like she's family to me. So nice. I'm going to be like that. I'm very, I'm very in, I'm, I love people. So I'm going to be the awesome. one that you're going to see do the seal claps. And the, I do this thing a lot when I get excited. <laughs> I know. Hey, you know? Yeah, HTK just said they're torturing themselves because uh, they they couldn't make open this year. Oh, don't, don't worry. worry, I'm not going worry. either. So, no, Joey's not, but I'm going to bring back lots of swag. I'm you, going you, I'm going to tell what, you. What we're going to try to do is actually a live show from open. Yeah. Where Robin's going to be at open, I'm going to be here. She's going to show us the floor, show us around the rooms. Yeah. Um, obviously, those sessions will be over at that time, but. Um, just kind of show us kind of a walkthrough, like this is where the vendors are, this is what this is, show us the people and maybe grab a couple people to like, you know, come on camera with you like real quick right. and give a couple shout outs and stuff, but at least give the audience a sense of what yeah. the size and scope of what it is. So, oh yeah. I mean, as, uh, as anybody who's gone before, it's changed every year. So I'm always like mm -hmm. excited about seeing what they do differently because they really do try to change it up. Um, but yeah, for our followers and, you know, uh, Joey, don't you worry. I'll be bringing back a lot of swag because I always come Sweet. back with so much stuff. The vendors bring a ton. eBay brings a ton. I mean, then there's stuff that's happening at the party on Thursday. There's going to mm -hmm. be stuff there. We get a swag bag. I mean, it's just, wow. it's pretty insane. So it's, well, fingers it's a really crossed I win the first prize. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. And for those who haven't, who are not going this year, remember, start saving now. Joey's going to teach you how to do that. And then remember, it's a huge write-off. So the hotel, yes. the the actual convention, and I even think some food costs, right, Joey, and gas and all of that. Yeah, you yep. sourcing, Everything. You know? Everything, yeah. Yeah. Because you're more than. Um... I want to say it's more than like 10, but I have to get the exact number. Don't quote me. If you're more than a certain amount of miles from your home base, when you're in the process of working, you can write off, you can write off part of your food. Right. So yeah, write right. off all your food, write off your travel, your hotel, your expenses, anything you do right. there in Vegas. So as long as you're not from Vegas, right? then you can write everything off. You yeah. can write some stuff off if you're there, but if you're traveling in airfare, everything, right. you can definitely get some of that done. So, And then you get to meet amazing people. Cause I'm telling yeah. you, I have some, amazing lifetime friends because ebay open so i highly encourage everybody to start saving your coin mm -hmm. for next year i mean because who knows it might actually change venues i don't know i mean i know they like uh vegas because it's easy to get in and out of and it is kind of a, a city that holds big conferences but you know who knows you never know it might change it might it might be in the florida or canada or who knows but definitely try to go because I love it. And, um, you get access to so many people that either when you follow on EG, you know, on mm -hmm. Instagram, Facebook, but you also get amazing access 
to eBay executives, not just the employees, but the executives. I mean, you've got, oh my gosh, Marnie from New York, who's a big ex senior executive is coming and she's amazing. We have some really strong women in eBay um, executive positions that I'm telling you as a woman, they're motivating and I'm all about it. So I say, go with your questions, grab your book, make a beeline. If you have a problem with a store or a customer, shipping, you name it, write it down, go. They're there to help you. Um, all I'm yep. going to say is just be kind and patient and, um, you know, amazing things will happen for you. You'll be surprised and meet amazing people. And if there's anything, I, I do know that a lot of people who have huge followings on uh, Instagram and Facebook and all of that and YouTube, <clears throat> that they're they're meeting at different places so make sure you follow them too so that you can find out where they're having a meetup or you know a fun little get together that they're going to be doing i know on monday at the skyfall lounge uh is a huge meetup um mm -hmm. so you know make your way that you know that your way there if you are flying in on monday or driving in i'm driving in four days before that so i'll already be at the hotel um, and yeah, just find me. I'm always the chick who wears the flowers in her hair. It's been like that forever. And, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm just super shy and, you know, <laughs> yeah, the, the point of this year is to bring Robin out of her shell. Everybody. Yeah. It, so I gotta try to don't talk to her, break, drag her to things, try to get her to open up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, just, you know, be a good human being when you're in Vegas. I mean, you're going to do some uh, things that just make sure that while you're going to the conference, maybe just keep hydrated because yeah. there's going to be a lot of alcohol flowing and there's lots of gambling and there's a lot of smoke. That, was, that because... was the other thing too. We didn't write this down as a tip. Anybody who's watching the show or follows us, if they win anything in Vegas, we get 50%. Oh, nicely done, Joey. Nicely done. That's coming from the yeah. guy who has the MBA. Nice. Yeah, that's, my, that's my financial <laughs> Mm -hmm. Tip of the day is you get 50% to us. It's the contract since it's in the video now and you guys are watching. You agree oh, okay. to it, right? right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that called strong arm? And, oh, that's what they do in New York, right? Hey, you know, it's <laughs> a little bit over there. You don't know about it. You tell me right. how to help you out. You're doing whatever. Yeah. All right. Well, and then we're going to try to figure out like what days are good for our videos because we do a lot of um, pre recorded. So um, those yeah. can go anytime. Um, but the lives, we'll, we'll work this out as we go. You know, we're newbies on the block. Yeah. So just be kind to us and tell us like what you're looking for. Um, you know, I'm pretty much all about the e-com lifestyle. And so that's what I'm going to bring to the table. And then there's Joey who's going to bring all the e-com, which is kind of missing in the, in the community because a lot of people get really confused with what they can write off, what they can't write off, how to save money, how to get insurances, mm -hmm. things like that. So just stick with us. And um, uh, yeah, I don't know. We're kind of, step. you know, yeah, we're kind of funny. We're kind of like, uh, what is that? Laurel and Hardy. That's the, I was going to say, the... Abbott and Costello, Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> oh, Abbott and Costello. Yeah. I like them too. I like them too. So yeah. So hopefully we'll grow and yep. we'll get a little more, um, scheduled and more tight with our conversations this is really amazing joey i'm glad you uh, I'm glad to decided to go with this yeah thanks for the tip yeah on this one. I, I love it yeah, yeah no so, no so again no look worries. for us to drop our new stuff on mondays um on youtube yeah. uh youtube itunes spotify google play it's all going to be the same thing right. it's the audio version of the live of the pre-recorded show that we do that's on right. youtube uh subscribe in all the places if you can even if you don't want to get notifications everywhere else right. just subscribe and help us out it'd be great if you guys can go on to um itunes and give us a little um rating and review on there kind of get our stars and rating Ooh. up we got uh, yeah, we got okay. one on there that was, uh, was okay um so i want to kind of get some more on there to boost that up that number up a little bit okay. so no problem there okay. and then like and subscribe here and everywhere else on instagram and then yeah we'll, we'll try to pop on these live shows maybe you know once a i don't want to say once a week but you know as often as we can uh sometimes it might yeah. just be me going solo it might be robin going solo with me just kind of working the controls if she's got something going on and um if we want to do something more like financial based i'm all to that just let us know and yeah. um yeah i think what we're going to do next episode uh Talk a little bit more about this is a little preview for next next week's lesson three. A little bit more about um, our seller dependence number. 
We talked about Ooh, that in lesson two. Yeah. And for those that don't know what that is, the seller independence number is figuring out what number you need to be an independent seller. We talked about going independent, um, which is basically full time on your own without any support from a job. Um, what do you need in order to replace your previous income, right. uh, your salary, your benefits, and what kind of sales do you need in order to replace all that? So that's your seller independence number. If you take your current salary, times it by X amount, 1, 2, 1.5, 2.2, whatever. That's your seller independence number. You'll nice. figure out what you need in sales in order to minus fees, minus inventory fees, minus taxes, minus everything else, minus having to buy new health insurance, minus having to buy your own disability insurance, your own term insurance, whatever you have to do. Um, what you're left over with would be your previous income. So you're used to you're used to budgeting off of that. So that's your seller independence number. Is that called to Sin number? That's your sin number. What's your sin? Exactly. <laughs> What's your What's sin? You figure it's out what your sin is. That's we're putting work. it out here right now. That is our merch shirt. Nobody yeah, shit that is copyrighted right now. <laughs> Hashtag what's your sin. Yeah. Uh, as of July 11th, 8.40 p.m., what's your sin? What is um, your sin? <laughs> exactly. So that's figuring out what your seller independence number is. And then what I can do, what I normally do with some sellers, is I help them figure out that number and I help them get there. And it's not the same for every seller. No. I, rule, of, rule of thumb I said in the last episode was two. So if you make $50,000 a year at your job, you need to at least be $100,000 in sales mm -hmm. because you have all your benefits you have to replace, all your taxes right. now you have to replace that you should got taken right. out of your check and everything else. So, Right. Um, well, unless you live in a country where the medical is already paid for, which is awesome. Yeah, but then you have a lot of stuff. <laughs> the other stuff is a little higher there. Too. Oh, yeah. Taxes, no, no. Yeah, I, yeah I for sure. Everybody, I think certainly great advice. I think everybody should know their SIN number. If I had known it before, um, I think my journey would have, would have not been like this. It would have been yeah. straight across. So, yeah. Um, and you it's know. not necessarily where you have to figure out like, okay, my SIN number is two. I can't quit my job until I get there. That's not necessarily true. There's going to be a tipping point where you could actually then quit your job. And mm -hmm. as long as you have an upward trend and we know you're going to get there eventually, there's like a range where you can go through. So let's say that number I said earlier was two, right? right. 50,000, you have to have 100,000 in sales. You might only need 75,000 in sales to start mm -hmm. the transition off. And then you're okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm now bringing home after I pay everything in taxes and everything else. Now I'm bringing home 40,000 instead of 50. I can budget off of that for a little bit while I'm building up. Right. Towards the 50. Because the, right. the worst thing you want to do is have maybe a small store with $1,000 a month in sales, $2,000 in sales, and quit your job. Oh, God. That gives me heart palpitations. I'm sorry. Yeah. It does. I, you know, I have a two income now because I'm a full-time seller now. But at one time, we, were, we went from a two to a one back mm -hmm. to a two. And during that one time, you know, where it was one income, it was very stressful. So yeah. – if I had known my SIN number then, it would have certainly gave me some goals and motivation to do other things. I mean, now I know my number and know where I need to be, and I'm almost yeah. there. You know what I mean? But exactly. I, then, I would, you know, the, I would never quit your job until no. you. Whew. And then yeah. uh, DuPage brought something up too. It's um, about budgeting for open, but take into account the, the quote unquote infamous summer slowdown that we're going through right now, eBay summer slowdown that always right. happens. So in those well, situations for some people, yeah, not everybody. For some people, but in those situations, what you do is you have what's called the Hill and Valley account. <laughs> so your Hill and Valley account is what I would recommend doing is you budget off when you're doing your budget, you budget off of your, your lowest monthly income. Oh, and yeah. And then so let's say for example, you have you have your 12 months of the year and your lowest month is February and that's $3,000 in sales, let's say. Okay. So you build your monthly budget on that $3,000. Every okay. month, every month you, you budget $3,000. Sure. So if January is $6,000 a month, you budget your three and then you put your other three away into another into an account to sort of make up for your lowest month, right? So right. let's say, for example, you have a low month in March. All of a sudden, you have bad sales, and your sales in March are um, fifteen hundred. Well, you have to make up the other fifteen hundred for your budget, right? But yeah. you made you made money in January, so you could pull it out of your Hill and Valley account and cover March for your overage from January. Clever. Yeah. So there's little things like that that we'll talk about. Well, and we'll also talk about diversing your, like, as Joey would say, let me point this way, Joey would say, 
diversify your portfolio, I'm going to say diversify your platforms. Because if you put all your eggs in one basket, mm -hmm. they crack. I, pretty much. Because, yeah, we, okay, yeah, exactly. because like when we had Glitch of Palooza last year in eBay, oh, thank God I had Posh going on because that mm -hmm. filled in my gap. And then I was selling reseller boxes and extra big hard goods out of my garage. Wow. So I, yeah, I mean, you know, like offer up, I mean, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And then of course I have connections here in Sacramento due to the meetups here and then also San Jose. So I was able to do like, okay, Hey, you give me 150 bucks. I'll give you like, you know, 25 shirts or what, you know, whatever I had going on. But again, that's what, what we'll talk about too. Yeah. Um, and I'm you sure anybody who's watching probably has side hustles too, because I've never met a reseller. I mean, and I mean a true reseller, not a hobbyist or part-time, <clears throat> um, because I think part-time you would be working full-time. <clears throat> but when you're a full-time reseller, I find that their motivation is amazeballs and their hustle is amazeballs. Like mm -hmm. they do not know the word no. So like if eBay stops, like it did last year when the glitches were just a Oh my God, I can't even tell you um, that you just pick up on another side. You know what I mean? So right. uh, Macari and I mean, there's so many platforms at this point now. So, I mean, I'm just going to keep telling you, diversify your platform and diversify your portfolio. And this is where Joey and I yeah. are definitely, we have a common thread and um, I'm also going to be learning the finances and Joey is also going to be learning the e-com lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we talked about that. I think it was episode two, or lesson two. We talked about diversifying yeah. Yeah. platforms, but also diversifying your inventory as if it was your portfolio. Yeah. So how risk averse are you in life? So if you're, you know, saving it for retirement in the market and you're, you're pretty risk averse. So you, you don't like a lot of risk. You do a lot of conservative sort of investments, but maybe you add in some really ultra conservative stuff like, like, uh, bonds or CD stuff that doesn't have a lot of return. It doesn't give you a lot of interest, but it's safe, right? Right. Uh, as opposed to a single stock that's sort of volatile. Mm. Um, we saw like if you were back in 2000 when the, when the, uh, or even 2007 with the housing crash, but back in 2000 when the internet stocks would boom and bust, if you were a single stock in Webvan or dogfood.com or any of those really weird ones, you, you were making a crap load of money one day and you were bankrupt the next because those <laughs> things were all over the place. Uh, but if you're in like a mutual fund that's pretty safe with long track records and stuff like that, then you have a little bit more um, – uh, diversification in your in, in your in your portfolio, but that's also the same thing when you're talking about your sales too. So if you are right. trying to get into a new marketplace, like we don't really sell women's clothing, just because honestly, I'm sorry, women are fickle, and they're gonna, <laughs> hey, we, don't okay. want, we don't we don't want to return, right? No, you you're know, right. You're right. Women are gonna. Like, we talked. I think it was Maria who said she's got a lot of. You know, I don't want to speak out of turn, but most of her, she sells a lot of women's clothing. She has a lot of returns, right? So that's right. just the way it is. So we don't, we don't really sell a lot of women's clothing, but I, if I wanted to sell women's clothing out of my thousand listings I have in my store, I wouldn't devote all thousand listings to women's clothing. I would de devote a percentage, like maybe less than 10%. So right now I'm looking at a hundred items that I would divert. Uh, uh, what's the word? Do you mean diversify? The devote, sorry, hundred, yeah, devote hundred items that I would devote to these other areas. So I would put maybe a couple of women's clothing in there, a couple of kids stuff, right. maybe a couple of cheeky items for me that right. I don't really know about. This way, I can sort of like, yeah, it's low risk. So if those things don't sell, I'm, I'm not invested a lot in them as of my overall uh, store is not invested a lot in them. But if they start right. selling, then I can sort of increase that area as I learn a little bit more about them. Right. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm. I am a hard goods seller. So what sells for one person in hard, go hard goods might not sell for me, but that's where I think um, constantly learning. You have to constantly learn. The day that you tell me that you know everything is the day that I probably stop following you because I don't think that's actually true. I mean, I know that when, I mean, I just found something the other day and I thought there's no way I, how did I not, how did I miss this brand? Right. It's amazing, right? I mean, right, and then, tell me about that. Oh my gosh. Right, it was amazing. But then another thing too, just like anything else, you know how like uh, fashion comes back around, so like the 80s are now coming back around. It's just like that in hard goods and clothing. So like mm -hmm. even though you're not selling something now, um 
if you think it's going to, uh, cause I can't really tell, I mean, sometimes you just have crap, right? I mean, let's be honest when you first right. start, or maybe you pick something up because you, you took a chance, like it was mm -hmm. 50 cents and you thought, why not? And a gamble, yeah. But then you realize this is crap. Like I'm not going to waste my time on this. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that that does pay off. And then there's times where, for example, like I was going back to the fashion, where fashion is certain things are selling now. Like Robert Grams, you you can't sell Robert Grams to save your life. But in my area, I can sell Robert Grams. But my prints and whatever, but they're they're definitely lower, right? But that's where like I was saying before, if you check on eBay's analyticals, that thing changes. So Robert Grams are not even on the top 10 right now. So don't buy Robert Grams. But what's to say that two weeks from now, all of a sudden Robert Graham is number nine on that list. The ones that you have, I would say drop or not drop, relist or do sell similar and start a new listing, mm -hmm. you know, bring, it's a, it's like posh too. I just learned like you, you, you know, end the listing and then restart it. It's kind of like what eBay does. They yeah. just, it refreshes your, your thing. But anyway, it's like anything you say, you have like, you have low risk, medium risk and high risk. It's the same thing in the econ yeah, lifestyle too. Exactly. If you're a high risk person, go out and buy a pallet of fidget spinners tomorrow. Right. right. Well, so Go ahead. We talked about that too. We talked if about that. If you're high risk, go right ahead. As long as you get a good price point on it, it's going to take you forever to sell. You may make some money. Go right ahead. Right. I'm, a, I'm a low risk type of person. Me too. So I, I started with stuff in our closet. I started with my personal collection of sports cards. I started with that. That's how I got some money to, to then go out and buy some stuff to flip in that well, same category of stuff I knew. I, I would you say know? if you're a full-time reseller and you don't have diversified platforms, you are definitely better not be doing high profile stuff or mm. platform, you know, high turnover on, on diversified. You should be low risk totally and do your bread and butter all day long. Yeah. And that's, you know, it is a good way. Your bread and butter and your, and your small listings is a good way to get started yeah. when you're still working your regular job. Oh, absolutely. To build up absolutely. Your, mm -hmm. your eBay bank account, let's say. Right. And then, you know, along the way, you'll learn too, like us fashion sellers, you know, because I sell fashion too, and I sell both men and women pretty equally. Are you laughing at a comment? No, I am because. Um, <laughs> I love that. I can't see the comment. I know. All Sorry, I guys. My partner, I, I'm, like, I'm the one running the thing here. <laughs> you. Oh, love this. So DuPage says, could you, Robin, could you buzz the, the Bay powers that be to maybe add a checkbox? that ensures buyers read the description boxes and look at all the photos. Lately, I'm having returns or negatives from buyers purchasing from title in one picture. Oh, amen. Oh my God. That'd be awesome. People do not read. No. And that's, and that I got to tell you, that is completely across all the platforms. Yeah. No, for sure. And the only way that changes is if they really truly know what they're buying. Right. I mean, uh, Loretta mm -hmm. and I sell a lot of vintage hard goods. She does a lot on Etsy and, and, some on eBay and we know that our buyers probably don't read. Really, I mean, if they know what they want, like if they know a brand or a designer, you know, for pottery or brass goods or whatever, they know exactly what they're looking for. And that first photo photo will tell them what they, what they have and they'll mm -hmm. purchase it. No problem. And they won't return, but it's these finicky people who are looking for a gift or they're kind of trying to like get into the mid-century modern. Like that's the newest, key. that's like the hot thing right now, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I got to have it. It's got, you know, whatever. And then they don't look or if there's a flaw because it's vintage and they don't right. realize that there's a scratch or whatever. Yeah. And let's be really honest too. I offer free shipping. And I've had to change my hard goods. So anything over a certain size, I have to send FedEx because mm. I, no kidding. I mean, it's, it's changed. So again, the whole diversifying thing happens all the time, not only in your portfolio and your platforms, but also you, how you ship things, how you purchase things, how you get rid of things. I, I, I agree that our buyers, we need to do a better job on training them, but I don't know how to do that really because eBay's number one thing is to get the buyers to the platform. Oops. I'm like, my, everybody. Yeah. No, I think, I think you're right. And I think like the page says, it's things to good sellers for the right detailed descriptions and include right. all the photos. And right. I mean, it's right. So what will happen is a lot of times they'll, this, the buyer will try to just get around that by putting an item that is described, maybe. 
And so you have well, to pay the return, and then you have that. to fight it on the way back. And it's sort of like, mm-hmm. you know, we've had that a few times where, like, a certain mm-hmm. shirt or hat, they're like, oh, I had one guy say um, it was a snapback hat, right? And he got it and said the uh, item didn't fit or whatever it was. So he sent it back. But they got a giant head, I guess, and the snapback <laughs> didn't fit. Well, he said so. He bought actually an extension for the hat too, an extended. Um, oh wow! Clip for the back, and it still didn't fit him. So I don't, I don't wow. really know how big the guy's head was, but wow, um, <laughs> he did, he did it. Um, I don't know how to describe because it's described as one size, mm. and it didn't fit him. So eBay was able to step in and kind of help out on that because, you know, obviously it's not a normal type of return, but. Right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Thrift Love Sales said it's always the twenty dollar item that screws you over. That is correct. Oh, it's always yeah, a small item so that you have to deal with. It's the most hassle. We had one. It was a four dollar and ninety nine cent DVD that we sent to. Okay, so Joey, this yeah. is where I'm gonna step in. <sighs> Why are you even wasting your time on a four dollar and ninety seven cent thing when you could photograph and list? Something that's fifty dollars. Well, it was something we had gotten from we when we first started. We everybody just gave us stuff to sell. Oh, okay. Well, well like, we all here's we our all here's our DVD somewhere. collection, right? So we sold yeah. it, and it got shipped to an address, mm-hmm. and the lady wasn't there at the address. She, she said she was at a different address. So the item got returned to the post office, and then in the return back from the post office to us, the post office lost it. Wow. So we never received the item back, but still had to again give the refund. To the to the customer, it was this whole like mess. But eBay took care of it. But it was just yeah. Like, well, not all the time. so much energy on this four dollar I mean, ninety nine well, thing, and not all the time does eBay handle it. No, no, so no. I'm no, just no, saying, sure. like, we're not here about like you know. We'll be really honest too and transparent with our situations. Um, and I'm sure seasoned sellers that sell way more than I do have had lots of experiences too. So I'm yeah. just saying, you know, just when you call, be nice. Just oh yeah. It's the first you know. first rule of uh first rule in Roadhouse. Be nice. <laughs> right? I love that. Well, I, I mean, just be a good human being. Like seriously, I yeah. know you're angry and upset, but again, I'm gonna be all over Joey because he now needs to remove all of his five dollar items from his store. I know, but Tina keeps telling me that. Or we need to bundle it and make it a fifty dollar bundle to make it even worth your while. Well, you guys used to want to buy it from me. That's what you're gonna do. So people out there in YouTube world, oh, you not do what Joey does and buy five dollar items. No, I'm telling you, it's like my sister in law got rid of all their stuff when they moved, and like here's I all our DVDs, and I'm like, it's okay to return it's it. It's free. Percent, t- you know, ticket from Savers. Like, right, but it was free for us. So I'm like, I'm gonna list this is when we first started. So I got you. I still have to do a store refresh. That's the other thing that I I, I do so many other things. And I'm focused on so many things, and honestly, like I'm not. I'm not a 24/7, 365 eBay seller. I'm more of a and I couple, get it. couple hours a day, a couple of days a week when right. I look at it. But well, your number one job is the fact. Let's be really honest: is financial coaching. That is your number right. one job. So everything else is a side hustle, and that's okay. But I am still going to be all over. Yeah, so I definitely have to go into my my store and uh, refresh a lot and pull a lot of stuff out. I got shirts that I've had on for a long time that I just keep lowering the price on. Eventually, Ooh. Just, hey, so that's a good question, out. Joey. We should ask. Our viewers, like seriously, what is the longest you will let an item sit in your store? Like, I'm always curious to see and hear like what people say. I mean, there are people that I know have over 2,500 items in their store, or let's mm-hmm. even say 5,000, and they'll just let it sit and ride forever. And yeah. I just don't know if that's super smart because I don't know. I'm all about. I'm always about. I'm not in the storage game. I. Mm-hmm. I move my stuff. And there are times when I think it's okay to put a goal on your store items. Like I would, you know, like maybe some of the bigger, um, what's the rare, rare items, like, you know, the, the really, you know, like uh, designer Mm -hmm. stuff or, or for me, it's mostly hard goods. So those, those do take a certain kind of buyer. I would probably do maybe nine to 10 months and then maybe start thinking about doing a sale or doing something to try to move it. Um, clothing. I'm kind of a six month girl. I'm, I'm, if it's not moving, I got to figure it out. It's either my listing. Um, I've got the wrong na- name in it. At the, maybe the market's changed again. So this again is why I always suggest like, you know, bolo lists are kind of an interesting thing. I'm not here to 
make anybody wrong, but I, I really don't like saying Bolo because for me, things change so quickly in the market that I like going off the of analyticals. And so eBay's got the best so far out of most mm -hmm. of the platforms. So I like to change, I like to go in there and find out in my categories what the top 10 are. And then I'll, I'll switch it out pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I'm kind of curious. Like, what what do you like? How long do you keep your fashion, and how long do you keep hard goods? Like, because I know you sell some pretty awesome vintage too. Because you just sold I try. Those. You did. You sold yeah. those awesome vintage Warren Brother. Um, Warren Brother cups. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't juice. They were tumblers. They were like yeah. they were bigger ones. Yeah. This guy's here. Yeah, there are there are maze balls. Like, what kid wouldn't love to see? I mean, I know there's a lot of kids who don't know the cartoons. Well, actually, I don't know because Scooby Doo's out there now, so kids know those. <laughs> those cartoons maybe yes. more so for awesome. us we um we're kind of a set it and forget it I but, am for most of the time but yeah I'm, but for the, what we did recently and i have to do it again and it worked it worked wonderful was right after the holiday we realized we had a lot of stuff on there that was over a year mm, okay um, 365 days so what we ended up doing was putting those uh lowering those by 10 10 percent putting them in auction for, for the week. And then after the auction ended, putting them back on an additional 10% lower. So eventually about 20% lower as mm -hmm. a new listing. And we ended up selling like, I don't know, 75 out of 300 items. Nice. And they were all these older items that sold. And the, what we do is, and what's important is in your um, custom field, we keep track of our original list date because once you end it and relist it, you don't know your original list date. So yes. it looks like a newer item. So in custom field, I keep track of all my stuff. I keep track of where my item is stored, right. uh, where I bought the item for, how much I bought it for, and my original listing date. So then I can go on there and look at things that maybe look like they've been listed for a month now, but they were listed two years ago, and I know I can blow those out right. if I need to put them on sale. So I really have to get back to really managing my account more uh, closely like that because they generated a lot of sales and I have to do it again with the next batch of stuff. But yeah, we had stuff on there that was like 18 months when I was looking at stuff and I'm like, mm -hmm. if somebody's not buying an 18 month uh, t-shirt for $4.99, it's like, what, what the, what, what am I doing here? <laughs> it's got to go. Yeah. 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 The, um, the long tail listings, I think DuPage said something about, um, ending and selling uh, sell similar. The only thing that eBay, when eBay talks about that with us at the meetup, um, they try to get away from that because yes, it does give a tiny bit of boost in um, search when you have a new listing and when listings are about to end. But the only problem is anything that you've connected that listing to in social media, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, or anything else, you lose the link to that because you have to then create a new link Right. When you sell similar, it's a brand new item, so you can't promote it as well. Mm -hmm. So you can't track as far as your clicks go and everything else. I mean, that's the only really downside to it. So if you have something on Pinterest and you have to go back into Pinterest, delete the old listing, put the new listing in because that other link would be dead to your old item. It wouldn't be there anymore. So yeah, for I mean, analyticals. I, but, you know, I mean, other yeah. than that, it's really like we used to do that too, end and list, and then – uh, I still do. I'm going to yeah. be really honest. So like, for example, on your, on your top of your items, there's like, right now I have like four pages, right? So I mm -hmm. immediately go to my fourth page and I'll look if it's, if I'm about five months in, I'll really look and see. And if I have watchers, the only time I don't end something is if I have watchers, because now we mm -hmm. have offers to watchers. Um, I don't end those, but anything that's over close yeah. to six months, I will end and revamp the listing itself because and I'll, but before I do anything I always check the bolo list on eBay the I call it the mm -hmm. bolo list but the analytical the analyticals on what the top 10 in those areas are so again I mean you're getting two perspectives Joey does it one way and it works for him and I do it one way and it works for me so I just think it's a matter of run your business the way you need to and you think it is um, well it works for me because it's the, it's the least amount of time yeah, but I, and that's okay but because you're, you're being really honest for for the the part time seller. That that's okay, but for us full time, uh, which is where we need to like where yeah. you're making your money in your financial coaching area, we are making the money in our ecom yeah. area. So I mean, I think it's good to have both perspectives because there is no right way or wrong way. As everybody says, you do you. Exactly. You know, all I'm saying is don't cheat the system. Don't be a bad seller. Be kind. 
be in gratitude and stay humble. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just saying that you, and always learn. That's Joey and I's biggest. Always mantra. be learning. Always be learning. Because as soon as you find somebody that you follow that says, oh, I know it all and I'm selling a million dollars. Like, really? I mean, are you, I mean, yeah, you might be selling a million, but what's the end result? Because how much are you putting back in the business and how much are you saving? And does that person have insurance? Does that person have- How much uh, did you spend on the items? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I yeah. mean, are they transparent enough to actually show your numbers? Right. Um, so I just always say like, just be careful because there's a lot of snake oil people out there, meaning like there's, you know, the witch doctors who will sell you anything. Um, I'm just saying that a lot of this stuff is available for you completely free. I right. mean, I know I have learned so much just and by I, some of the people that I really admire and trust mm -hmm. because they are so transparent and they're so willing and, and um, upfront with their offerings of knowledge. As soon as someone puts a price tag on it, and I'm not saying there's not coaching out there that is probably valuable, but in the beginning <clears throat> as a new seller, no, I'm not talking about financial coaching. <laughs> I'm talking about like, you know, the Patreon groups and things like that. But as right. a new seller, when you don't have the, the um, dinero, mm -hmm. you don't need to spend a fortune to learn the basics because I'm going to tell you, and like anybody else who sells on eBay, learn eBay first. It is the hardest platform platform to learn and to do it right. Get the biggest number one complaint that Joey and I hear all the time is the shipping terrifies the hell out of them. And it's like, it's not that hard, but you do have to learn it and you have to know it and you have to be an honest seller. Mm -hmm. There's too many people who do, you know, the shortcuts. And in the end, yeah, you could do it and you could get away with it now, but in the end it will cost you either one, your reputation as a seller two it will cost you some, um, some eBay. I mean, the eBay might step some in money, and say, hey, by the way, and they start, and then what happens is next thing you know, your account's being suspended. Mm -hmm. So it's like, just be careful when yeah. you're first starting out. Just make sure that if you're following somebody on um, Instagram, and I keep going back to Instagram because that's like really my social media outlet. But on Facebook too, there are lots of groups that will give you all kinds of information and they will tell you the, oh, woe is me. And they'll tell you, oh, the world has fallen, the little chicken littles. You know, I'm here to tell you that if you put the hard work in and you're consistent with eBay, and now I understand with Posh too, you will make sales. But at the same time, right. don't sell crap figure out right. what's selling if and this is where i went back to like the first and second video that we dropped about stay within your lane so if you're mm -hmm. good at something if you know something like jimmy boy is amazing with golf and and uh, fishing so i turned to him for those labels you know like uh there's foot joy and there's mm -hmm. loud Mouth, you know there's all these great golfers who have gear out there. I'm going to stick with what Jim tells me is the top 10 and nine out of 10 times I'm selling it. I mean, I, I sell foot joy. Like it is out the door as soon as I list it. And then Joey and I are pretty good with vintage hard goods. We have an eye for it, but I think that's because we're eighties kids. So we kind of know like it's, it's, the 80s, hot. Yeah. it's hot right now. And streetwear is really hot. So yeah. I, you know, and I've got kids in my teenager, I've got millennials in my world, but I'm telling you right now, if you're a mom, and this is where a lot of moms get a little hiccup, is if you're a mom who from infant to toddler to small, you know, from ages from six to 10, let's say, or, or 10 on, you you buy the brands, you, you buy the brands, you know more than I do. So like fine, and the toys, toys for children, turn so quick. I mean, like how many times have you bought something for your child and they're like, Hey mom, this is great. And then four months later, that's back on the shelf. But then you realize when you look it up, you're actually, Whoa, this is like $80 sitting right here. Yeah. So I'm just saying as a beginner eBay -er, or even an eBay, I mean a beginning e-com seller, you probably have a lot of money within your own house. Cause most of us resellers, in fact, I'd probably say all of us start from our closets. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? You start with what you know, Right. Because you know how to ship it. You know what it feels right. like. You know what it looks like. You know how to describe mm -hmm. it. And that's I your, get that. That's your and practice. I, that's your right. practice. Mm -hmm. Get get that out there. A um, couple things you learn from us on the show is I'm big on shipping. Like Robin said, shipping scares people. But I love it. Just think in your head. Mm -hmm. Ship items, the golden rule. Ship items the way you want to receive them. Mm -hmm. So if you want to receive them with a 
bow on them and looking nice in a package because that's how you know Amazon would send it to you or somebody else would send it to you back in the day or grandma would send it to you when you were a kid. <laughs> send it out that way. Right? I was going to say, not Amazon. They just throw it in a, a super big box they of used air to, pillows. Well, they used to throw them in the, the right size boxes of air pillows back right. in the day. Now they just over mm. um, Yeah, so ship it the way you want to receive it. Right. Because that, that's the impression you're making with the seller. Well, the first and, impression of your item is when you open the box up. Yes. And they see how you how what care you gave that item. Right. right. Well, and the second part to that, too, is make sure that you, when you're listing that item and and – People who sell hard goods will attest to this too. Do not list it unless you actually know how much that bad boy weighs and what type of box you're going to put it in. Because yeah. now that you, the United States Postal Service has changed it, it's no longer about the size. It's the volume. Mm -hmm. So something that's like a vintage birdcage that weighs less than five pounds is going to cost you like $100 to send from the West Coast to the East Coast yeah. through through postal service True. But if you do FedEx or cubic shipping. I mean, like this is where just stick with us, you guys. Yeah, that's what we, that's what what we do when we ship was we, we, when we list the item, when we ship it, we store it in the box. It's going to stay in. So we don't have to well, worry about finding a box for it or anything exactly. else. You well, know, it's a pro tip. Way. Here you yeah. go, you guys, we just dropped a pro tip. The pro tip is if you've got amazing items and especially heavy items, do yourself a favor. Yeah. Cause that I'm, thing, find the box. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm all about the money. So if you, mm -hmm. Miscalculate. If you miscalculate on your shipping, it's going to cost you money in the end. And, it, and I'm sure you're yeah. going to listen. Joey and I've got our failures. Seriously, oh, sure. I, I have lost out on the shipping. It only takes me one time. Yeah. Only one time. And I was like, oh, I'm done doing this. I got to yeah. do my research. Um, and then I got really smart and wised up really quickly. But and then you also again, this is where the diversifying your items in your store. I had to get rid of some stuff that there is no way a buyer is going to buy a one off or a used item and have to pay more in shipping than what the thing is worth. It's true. ridiculous. Yeah, true. Yeah redonkulous. So that's where, again, as a new seller, I would suggest stay with your knowledge base. So wherever you are in your life, you, I know, you know, something really well. So mm -hmm. if you're a mom, I know, you know, labels really well. Yep. And if you're a fisherman, I know, you know, fishing equipment. And if you are a sports guy, you know, it goes on and on and on. Yep. So stay with what you know, and then move on from there exactly. and then start diversifying just like your portfolio start with exactly very low risk and then start your medium risk and then once in a while you might get a gut feeling for example starbucks changing their mugs you know the the cups that changed with um Color you know, hot mugs, yeah. we jumped on that bag wagon too but but because i've had that experience before we didn't go you know 45 items in we did 10 and we were right on the cusp of where it hit hot. And I was able to sell things at $100 at a time. I have one left that's sitting in my store. And it's one of those things where like, woo, thank God I got rid of the rest of them because then you're sitting on money because we had right. to pay full price. There is no like, you know, nicey, nice deals being made there. You know, yeah. but anyway, I mean, we could go on and on and yeah, on. I, yeah. I got watching the time. I don't want to go like four hours of a live this is show. Our, this is actually our longest show now. It is. Well, because it's because people came in a little yeah. later. No, that's so fine. The other that. thing, you, other thing people will, will learn from us. We said we said it last time was uh, you were talking about finding people. Um, mm -hmm. We're not we're not about the how. We're about the why. We'll give right. you some how to do things and how how we do things. How Robin does things right, a little right. different. But we're more about the why. Like, why are you selling? What are your goals? How can you get there? What is your why to do what you want to do with econ? Right. And so if you want to follow us to learn how to like how to list an item and that's you're going to follow that T to T and you're going to buy that same item and list it, uh, just go watch another show. Mm hmm. Because that's not really what we're here to do. We're not really here to like have copycat. No, seller we're not, not going to reinvent the so wheel here. We're here to we're here to help you with your why to, to bring you from where you are to where you want to go. And we'll show you how to ship. We'll show you how to list. We'll show you some keyword stuff. We'll show you where to look for things. But that's not really our focus. Our focus is kind of just shooting the breeze with each other. We're we're both ecom sellers. Um, it's a it's a it's a lifestyle we both live. Um, selling on ecom and man, that's it. Yeah, really. It's really it's more about 
just that, just about, we wanted to get the community involved and Joey and I saw a need within the community um, where nobody really talked about their lifestyle. Like they never really talked about the woes and the wins and the pros and cons and, um, and then the finance. A, a lot yep. of people get stuck on how do I invest in my business and my family and how do I save? Because let's right. be really honest, I'm gonna be real, I'm gonna come in close. Most of us resellers don't have retirement. So less than four or five, right, six, seven, right? Nine, 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 and then nine. the numbers we did on the last show, Joey, still have my mind boggled. Did you know that Joey dropped a fact on number two, lesson number two about Resellers who get to the five-year mark, 90% fail. 90%. Holy moly. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. I mean, and that's not brick and mortar. That's just e-com sellers online because they're not doing it right. They start off really bumpy. And I'm sure because I'm a seasoned seller now, I consider myself a, a seasoned seller. It was really bumpy in the beginning and I had a lot of fails. But... Now it's like I, I, what, whoever we're teaching or what we're trying to help people with is that you've got to really set yourself up for the win wins in the very beginning so that when the fail does happen, which will happen once in a while, it won't be catastrophic. Do you know what I mean? Like your account all of a sudden got suspended because you were doing Vero's and or Amazon cut you off at the, at the feet. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, don't, I don't want that for anybody. But yeah, so it, I mean, this is all new to us and, and drop stuff to us, DM us, let us know what we yeah, can improve on, exactly. what we like, you know, um, we're going to have lots of contests. Joey and I have access to some really amazing people in the eBay world. Um, so we're going to bring them on. We're going to get their expertise. We've got a lot of financial people that we'd love to bring in and figure out like yeah. what they're doing. Um, you know, small sellers, medium sellers, you know, big sellers. We're all about it. Um, exactly. If we're, you know, yeah, look for another, just, you're right. And it's not yeah. just one platform. Joey has a lot of side hustles. I have a lot. And we really just wanted to bring in something different to the community and not reinvent the wheel, obviously, because Joey and I do have a lot of um, people that we follow that we admire that have taught taught us quite a bit. And, you mm -hmm. know, we're not trying to step on toes and we're the new kids on the block. And, you know, we're still learning our way a little yeah. bit. Um, but yeah, so look for, I mean, we've got a lot of stuff down the, you know, in the works. Down the pipe, coming, yeah, down for down sure. Pipe, and we're really excited and we have access to some things that some people don't have access to. So, so you know, we're excited. Yeah. So we're again, excited. Mondays, look for the live, look for the show to drop on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and YouTube. Look for this, the show to pop up on there. Look for live shows every so often. I'll do my best to give us more notification than before, probably at least a couple hours or at least a day ahead of time. Yeah. Um, some live shows coming up we're going to do. Um, a live, definitely a live show with Robin at eBay Open. Yeah. At the end of the month. And we'll probably do a shorter live show live from Meetup. Ooh, yeah, that would be fun. Just to give everybody a sense of what yeah, you yeah, yeah. out and like. Yeah. So you can just listen in to what we're doing and then um, yeah. you know, we'll come on towards the end and sort of say give a recap of meetup or yeah, something. So absolutely. maybe we'll try something that out, like a short little few minutes of meetup and then uh, mm -hmm. some commentary and stuff, just kind of give people an idea of what it's about. Yeah. And then the last thing I'm gonna say is meet me, find me in an eBay open. I've got yeah, limited definitely edition do that. swag. And uh, give me your business cards. Give me your swag. And um, we're going to have lots of contests after I get back. And, um, yeah, yeah, just, like, get the word out and support us because we're exactly. trying to get to 1,000 subscriptions on YouTube and yeah. the podcast because we, we have some really cool contests. And um, yeah. thanks, for everybody, for sticking in with us through the yeah. whole and thanks hour for and 45 head. minutes. Well, it's all right because we were doing a new thing. Steam, you know, StreamYard is, it's oh kind of. Oh my God, hour and 45. Minutes. Yeah, I know. It's just, the time get, the time just goes by so fast. Yeah. And we'll get this tighter. I mean, we'll get this down. We'll get it like this. So don't you worry. But hey, you guys, it was so fun. And I love the right. new, the new look. I love it. Joey, it was great yep. to talk to great you. Great talking I'll to you again. Tell you. I said hello. We'll do. I you guys and I'll see you soon. And we'll talk before open. And you guys, bye, you guys. <laughs> Later. Class dismissed. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>